So apparently we need to talk about the folding table scene in 41. Okay. You've seen 41 by now and you've probably got some issues with the folding table and that Aiden never tried to cut the tires of the car. Let's talk about it. So obviously this movie was made very, very cheap and back in 2012, I think it was 2012, maybe even slightly earlier, shot on a Canon 5D, cost less than five grand to make the whole film. Um, it's sort of blown up online, which is great. Really um, interesting community that love time travel in this story, which is wonderful. Um, and obviously there's little elements in the film that you know can suck you out of the movie sometimes. Um, one of those being the hospital bed uh, scene with grandma and also why doesn't he cut the tires so i've received um i don't know thousands of messages about um this particular little scene in 41 where aiden walks in to see his grandmother and she's apparently on a folding table now to be honest at first i initially said to myself and to the greater internet community that um that's not a folding table that's a hospital bed it's a state-of-the-art latest greatest hospital bed just happens just so happens to look like a folding table um it's a folding table she's on a folding table with like a thin little mattress on top so when we um when we shot 41 we used there is like a hospital bed bedroom there's a hospital scene in the film when aiden goes to see patient x in the hospital um and that was like a, like a university you know, real sort of looking hospital um, set that we sort of rented out and used for the film. And then when it came to the nursing home stuff, we didn't have any other options and we ended up using like a church hall and it was an office in the church. We thought it was small enough and just so happened to work lighting wise that we could shoot this particular scene with the grandmother stuff in the room with Anne Cordner and Chris Gibson as the actors. And um, no one thought anything about it. I don't think we even, like, well, thinking back i'm sure Anne probably said something about the hospital table i actually recently worked again with Anne on ancestry road Anne ancestry road huh. and um i'm sure she said something about it at the time i don't remember exactly but there's a particular one wide shot that obviously looking back at it now i probably would have cut out um because a lot of people have it ruins the whole film for them that she's on a hospital <laughs> you know a table a fold-out table um you know, when you're making an indie film for like, you know, 5,000 bucks, you know, a table and a mattress is a pretty good idea for like a, you know, a nursing home bed. Um, it's, it's easily cut aroundable. We could have easily have cut that shot out, but I always like to sort of, well, back in the day, I would like to establish the, the room first and show everyone what the room is before we cut into the close-ups, you know, where you are. Um, that style of mine has since changed. I like to sort of maybe show us a quick snippet of that, sometimes three to four seconds mid-scene. Um, that seems to be the style these days, but yeah, there's definitely a shot and you can see the folding table and, uh, takes, and luckily for some particular reason, I'm not sure exactly why, but most people that see the film, they're so taken by the film that it's fine. They, they sort of just, you know, by the end of it, they're like, this is a really great movie. And they sort of forget about, you know, the downfall similar to the other day. Actually, I got the copy right here. Ghostbusters watching, I don't know if you can see that watching Ghostbusters one the other day. And the effects in that movie, some of the effects, especially with that gargoyle thing running down the street, that stop motion effect, it's really, really bad. Um, that's because they had to rush it and get it finished. And those stop motion effects were not finished. They were their first passes that had to be used in the film. And the movie's still great. You know, you, you can forgive, please forgive. You can forgive um, films for, you know, mistakes sometimes, can't we, please? So, um, yeah, it's definitely a hospital bed. I'm very actually quite surprised at the amount of comments about the hospital bed. Um, and, you know, like positive and negative comments are great for anyone's film. So either way, it doesn't bother me, to be honest. But um, I thought I should address it because um, it's been quite... It's been quite a an interest in the, in the bed, in the hospital bed. So, yeah, if you are making an indie film, by all means, use a table, use a mattress use a couple of sheets and make a hospital slash nursing home bed, but cut out the wide shot when you can see the legs because that's uh, that gives it away. And it, it's actually quite fascinating, the littlest detail that can take you completely out of a film, and that's obviously that in 41, not my dodgy 1.4 f-stop shots trying to keep people's faces in focus because I liked the bokeh. 
But um, and that's what I'm working on in my latest film, an ancestry road. I'm making sure there's no possible slightest little elements of you know, the low budgetness of the film that can really suck you out of the project. And it's all about the characters and the, you know, the music and the story is, is all just keeps you in because um, as soon as you get sucked out of it a little bit, it can ruin it. So with the tire thing, you would have to say that he's directly trying to stop something. He's not trying to influence it. He's directly taking physical action to stop something and it won't work. It has to be influenced. A person has to make the decision for themselves to change their own future. We can get out of it that way, can't we? I'm sure. <clears throat> so it's interesting that, yeah, most people really go with, he should have cut the tires because then it would have stopped the car. She would have had, he would have had to walk her home anyway. It would have stopped the accident. Um, maybe. I don't think I, I don't ever think we even thought about that when we we're making the film. It was never an option to even think about you know him cutting the ties. Not that I remember anyway. Um, there's a lot of other ideas that came into play when we we're making the film. The biggest one being that the hotel manager was Aiden. That was like a very last minute thought. Um, I think Adrian came up with that idea, which was like I jumped on it like crazy because um, that's something that even I didn't think of. Like that was just a twist that I was like, ah, oh, okay, that's. I knew that I wanted him to be someone, but not Aiden. And then when we're like, you know, this, no one's even paying attention to this guy. We need to, he, he should be Aiden. So yeah, cutting the tires, that seems to be the, the big thing. Why didn't he cut the tires? And, I, and I've always thought uh, to get out of that, you know, from the director's writer's point of view, I'm like, well, he's physically trying to impact the scenario and it's not going to help change it. Um, like him, you know, jumping in front of the car to stop the accident. That's, it's a physical action. You have to influence the characters um, to get them to make the right decision um, as he influences somehow himself at the end of the film to, to go to the Heathscape Motel. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. It's quite the conundrum, this movie. Have I watched 41 recently? I know I haven't. I don't usually tend to revisit films that I make. I find it quite difficult to sit through movies that I've made, which is weird. Um, when I'm making the film, like right up until... Um, it's, you know, the end of, before we screen it, I'm always very much obsessed over it. The littlest detail, I think I've watched Ancestry Road recently, probably 25 times in the last two months. Um, but once it's out there and done and actually like, you know, out of my hands, I don't look at it really ever. Like I might watch a scene or two, but I've been, rarely ever sit through the whole thing. And it's kind of, it's a weird thing. It's a very common thing, I think, for directors. It's, um, it can bring back a lot of stresses. <laughs> you can sort of worry about the things you got wrong and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it just tends to not be as entertaining. It, it is, it is as Miley Cyrus said, it is the journey. It's the climb. Um, once you get to the end of it, it's kind of like that. That's it. That's, um, I'm happy with that. That's all good to go. Um, and that's kind of kind of a disappointment i've always thought that about movies that you know you get to the end of a, a really big project and you kind of don't really care too much to revisit it after that um the journey itself to get it done is amazing um and the amount of work you have to put in the brain power it takes and the the ups and downs that you have to go through to get mostly downs to get a film finished is quite intense um a lot of people get confused by what the movie is even called it's a number it's kind of it was probably kind of a bad marketing idea to call the film a number when I was writing the film, the number 41 just kept popping up for that year. Like it's in all different aspects of things, I would like win a little prize and the ticket number was 41. I'd sit at a table was number 41. Um, the fa my favorite house on this particular street was number 41. It just sort of kept, my favorite song was at the time was 41 by Dave Matthews Band. The song just kept popping up. The Sorry, the number just kept popping up in all different ways. And so when I wrote it, I was just like 41. It just was an easy decision. Um, and I think the way it's, uh, labeled and titled on the YouTube video, um, you know, it's mind bending time travel film, whatever it's called. Doesn't really focus on the title, doesn't call it 41. And when the title does come up, it's kind of a weird clock animation number thing that's a little bit cheesy. I probably wouldn't do that now, but I did then. Um, a lot of people get confused by the ending. I think it's like probably a third of people do not understand who's who at the end. And the other two thirds that do get it are like, wow, that's the best bit of the whole film. And that's what I remember happening when we first screened it people sort of coming up and going, yeah, the film movie was good, but man, that ending. And that's really important, I think, for films to have a really good ending because that's what you're left with. And that's what you, if you rewatch it, that's what you're leading towards. You want to get to that end to get that emotional payoff or that storyline, you know, payoff. So that's what um, is important for films. So I think if you've, got, if you've got a bad ending, 
It's it's um, at a really good. Well, sometimes you can have a bad ending in a really good film. There's many of those that exist, but me personally, I like to end films as the best way possible. Um, whether it's some sort of twist or emotional, um, you know, crescendo, I think that's really important for films, um, and that's what Forty One's all about. So I think that yeah, the ending helped us a lot. And the editing of the ending, the way that that's structured, because init- initially the ending of 41 was very, very cryptic and it really didn't make much sense, but I loved it. I was like, people are going to have to look into this and try to figure it out. When they do, they'll love it. But it was just a little bit too much. Um, and I had an editing friend and she was like, you need to just take out this shot and put it over here. And all of a sudden that whole ending just made a lot more sense. The exact same thing happened with Dreams of Paper and Ink. Had a very complicated ending. I was introducing alternate characters right in the last scene the movie didn't need it when my mom watched it she had no idea what was going on at the end um you, you do you have to spell things out to a point unfortunately and I, and I was really trying to go for my own this is my own vision this i'm just gonna, i don't care about the audience i'm just going to make it like this but in reality you have to you got to spell things out sometimes because otherwise you just alienate people a little bit too much and it's a very fine line between how much you want to and don't want to alienate people so yeah yeah um but of course, you should have the freedom to do anything you want when you make a film. And I think there's too many movies that obviously are f- far too affected by how the audience thinks the movie should be. Um, so, yeah, the ending was helpful. So if you don't understand the ending, there is an explanation video on the channel at the moment talking about that. So anyway, thank you for watching this uh, short video, just answering your questions about 41 online and your frustrations and your interests and your... And your love for the film. Like that's a really wonderful thing each day to sort of wake up to, you know, many, many comments each day on the videos, mostly on YouTube, luckily. Um, it is on many other platforms at the moment, but YouTube seems to be the one to hit off on. And yeah, the positive comments that I wake up to every day are very lovely and um, they keep me going. So thank you very much for watching this video and my other videos. And please check out other stuff on my channel. I'm going to be putting up a lot more stuff about Ancestry Road very shortly. Thank you very much.